Hey God, it's such a joy for me to be with you all today and just want to let you know that you know, you're not here by accident. God has something amazing in store for you and He wants to take you from glory to glory. He wants to take you from victory to victory. And I just want to believe with you and pray with you that everything that you've been hoping God for, God is going to do things that you could not even imagine as well. Today I'm going to talk about how you need to practice to hear the voice of God and to all the ways continually walk hearing His voice. So, you know, many times we, we uh, kind of go to God and just say, God, you know what, uh, in the morning you just read and say, okay, God, I want you to talk to me. And then you read the Bible passage and then uh, you say, okay, God, what do you have for me? And, and then the rest of the day it just goes on. Okay, and uh, most likely some of you do that on a regular basis going to God and reading from His Word or praying or when you are asking God for His will th through the counsel of somebody else or when you go to church and you want to hear the Word. You know, that's, that's all good, but the truth of the matter is God doesn't just want to talk to you about some things or through some things or, you know, just when you go to church or just during your prayer time. But he wants to involve in every detail of your life. In fact, the truth of the matter is the scripture says that, you know, acknowledge God in all your ways and he will crown your efforts with success in one translation. And it generally says uh, that he wants to direct your steps. I want you to understand this important truth. The Bible says acknowledge God in all your ways, not just in some ways, not just in your spiritual ways. In everything you do, he wants to direct your steps. But the truth of the matter why people are struggling through life why they fall, why they falter, is because they are going to God, they're just asking for His guidance uh, only once in a, in, a, in a day or once in a week or something or just once in a while and then go on just like life, living their life just like that. But that's not the way it should be. You need to have a continual hearing of the Word of God. You need to keep on going, keep on walking every day, every time, every minute, whatever you do, everything should be done as He leads you, as He speaks to you, as He is guiding you. Only then, when you acknowledge Him in everything you do, whether you go to speak somewhere, whether you have to meet somebody, whether you have to meet a client or talk to a person or to watch something or do something, in everything when you acknowledge God, he will direct your steps. He wants to do and lead you the way you're supposed to be. See now, one thing I want to tell you, my previous message is also available on the same thing, but I'm not going to focus on the things that I've already s spoken earlier uh, about how you need to tune to hear the voice of God. A couple of things are already there, but what I want to emphasize is that you need to continually walk hearing His voice. The last time I taught on how to hear his voice and so on, but now my emphasis on how to continually walk hearing the voice of God. Because in every area when you hear him and allow him to lead you, guide you, teach you, only then you will see that he will crown your efforts with success. That you will see that God will go into open doors no man can shut. So here's the thing. Let's start off by reading from right from the beginning of the book of Genesis. When you look into uh, what happened with regard to Adam and Eve, okay? One of the major reasons why they fail, we can we are going to just discuss and find out what actually went wrong. And then you will be able to realize why it is important to hear His voice at all times. Another thing you need to understand is that God's idea is not to make your life miserable. His whole idea is He wants to ensure that you are living your life to the fullest potential and the life to the fullest that he has in store for you now when you look into this incident okay of the fall of man when you look at it okay i want you to understand something here if you read through in the book of genesis chapter 2 okay when God is talking to man, verse 15 onwards, I'm just going to read to you. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat of it. For the day you shall eat, you shall surely die. Okay, so God is speaking to Adam the man and says you can eat of anything but don't eat from the tree 
of the knowledge of good and evil. This is God speaking to Adam. Okay? Now, you see something here in, in, in chapter 3 when he was being tempted by the enemy. Okay? The serpent comes and tempts her and in, in the first couple of verses that's what happens. And uh, Eve is having a conversation with the serpent. Okay? And uh, I'm just going to read to you so that you will get the hang of what I'm trying to say. Okay, uh, verse 1 onwards. Now the serpent was more uh, crafty than any of the beasts of the field which the Lord had made. And he said unto the woman, As God said, you shall not eat of every tree in the garden. And the woman said, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Okay, verse 3. But of the uh, fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, that's talking about that particular tree which God forbid them from eating, God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Now look at this. I just showed you two scriptures. The one where God calls Adam and says, you know what? You shall not eat of it, for when you shall eat of it, you shall die. But now this Eve, okay, Adam's uh, spouse, Eve, is tempted by the enemy. And she is saying... You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it. So you see the problem there was there was a distortion of the word of God. Even before the fall, what actually happened was the distortion of the word. Now you may say, maybe Eve made the mistake. Now I'm just going to make a simple comparison be between Adam and and the greater Adam. You know, the Bible makes this comparison to the New Testament where it talks about Adam and the greater Adam being Jesus. Okay? Um, Adam is uh, a likeness of that way and Adam's bride is Eve and Jesus' bride is the church, that's you and I. Okay? Uh, because even if you read through in the book of Romans 5, it gives that comparison between Adam and Jesus. Now I'll just come to you and explain what I'm trying to say in just a minute. So you realize that there was a distortion of the word. And now you may say the problem was with Eve. Okay, now let's look at it in the light of what actually happened. Now number one, okay, is verse 17, God calls and tells Adam, you shall not eat of it. Okay, and then verse 18, and the Lord God said, it's not good for the man to be alone. I will make him an helpmate. Okay. And then it goes on down. And then you realize uh, in verse 22, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made a woman. Which means that God gave the word to Adam. Okay. That you shall not eat of that particular fruit even before he was made. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? So God gave the word through Adam even before Eve was made. Okay, so the word was before Eve. So which means in all likelihood, Eve received that word not directly from God, but he, she received the word from Adam. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? So the question we are trying to find out is where was the distortion? All right, whether it got distorted by Eve or whether it was by Adam, the distortion of the word. Because you see, that is the underlining thing we realize from which the whole falling apart has taken place. So if the distortion started with Eve, you really need to understand if that's the case, then where was Adam? What was he doing? Okay, now you realize number one, that he received the word from Adam. So you may say, you know, maybe Adam gave the word correctly, but Eve was the one who distorted the word. So we're going to look at this. Where was Adam when Eve uh, was being tempted? Okay. You may say, I've heard many people say, including people of theological background say, you know, I don't know where Adam was. But I want you to check this out in, you know, Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good f for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit therefore and did eat and also gave it to her husband who was with her. I want you to understand. Adam was with Eve when he was being tempted. 
So if the distortion was from Eve and not from Adam's side, when he was being tempted or when she said, you know what, God told that we shall not even touch it, Adam should have told Eve, you know what, that's not the word, you're distorting the word. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? Many a times the problem is the distortion is happening in subtle ways. And that's what happened here. Eve received the word from Adam, not from God. And even then, if you try to put the blame on Eve, the problem is, if Adam really hadn't distorted the word, he could have prevented Eve from you know, distorting the word. You understand what I'm saying? So you need to understand that the distortion was coming from Adam's side. That he hadn't revealed the word in the proper way that it should have been revealed. And the reason why there is a fall is because the first and foremost thing that happens is there's a distortion of the word. So when you look at it in the light of Jesus, who is the word, okay, I want you to understand that you are not alone, that you have you as a bride of Christ, okay, just like Eve and Adam, you know, wherever you go, whatever you do, he is always with you. Just like Adam was with Eve, God, Jesus is always with you. And he himself is the word of God. But now you may tell me, okay, now Adam is the one who distorted the word. But Jesus is someone who will restore it. He won't distort it. That means he's always trying to talk to you. He's always trying to communicate with you. He's always trying to tell you, you know what, this called distortion of the word. No, don't do that. He will constantly remind you of the word and he will constantly have a fellowship with you. And when you start going with that flow of allowing him to lead you, that's when you will see results in your life. Allowing the fact that he is always with you, allowing the fact that he is always walking with you will help you in understanding and going as he leads you in your life. See, the thing is this. Uh, one of the best ways to understand that Jesus is with you is by using this tool of imagination. Now, now the scripture puts it this way uh, in Ephesians chapter 3 that you know um, that our God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly far and beyond whatever you, you can ask or think or even imagine. You know if you really want to see this in reality I want you to start imagining Jesus with you. You know, if you want to grow in that intimacy with God, if you want to grow in that uh, sphere where you want to hear His voice and all the time, the first step you need to do, how to make it real, how to grow in that intimacy, is I want you to just start imagining Jesus with you. Because you're imagining not something else, you're imagining the Word of God in reality. The Bible says, you know, that He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you even to the end of this age. So that means Jesus is always with you. Right? So I want you to just imagine Jesus with you. I want you to either whenever you're going, wherever you're going, just imagine like, oh, wow, Jesus, you're with me. Oh, wow, Jesus, you're talking to me. You know, when you start imagining and you start talking to him, it makes it all the more easier for you to have a conversation with him. Instead of thinking like, oh, I don't know, just talking like randomly. Many times, many reasons why people struggle through their prayer life is because they're not able to connect with God. But that's why God has given this amazing tool that you can use to imagine Jesus with you. Just imagine He's talking to you. Just imagine that He's standing in front of you and smiling. Just imagine that He was walking with you wherever you go. Just imagine when you're writing your exam, He's just standing there and teaching you stuff. Just imagine when you are struggling through life, making a choice, He's just whispering and saying, you know what, hey, that's the way you need to go. Just can, if you start imagining Jesus everywhere, whatever you're doing, and He's allowing Him to become real in your life, your intimacy with Him will grow. You won't struggle to think like, oh, I'm all alone. You'll realize, no, I'm not alone. Oh, Jesus, you're with me. Ah, you start talking to him because you realize that he's right there with you. See, that's what will help you to grow in that intimacy. One of the best tools to grow in that intimacy is to start imagining and, Allah and start having conversations with God because he is a good, good father. He's a good, good God. He won't be like, okay, you're talking, I'm just going to sit there and watch you talk. That's not who he is. 
if you allow him to talk and say, you know what, God, I want you to talk to me. I want to just allow you to talk to me. I want the word afresh to me. I don't want to be distorted. I don't want to be clouded in my mind. You talk to me. I'm telling you, you know what, when you start talking to God like you're talking to me or talking to any other person, I'm telling you, your life will take an all new turn. You will be able to walk in the word of God rather than, you know, any uh, loophole allowing, you know, uh, any kind of a distortion of the word, you will be able to walk the word of God. That's the thing I want you to understand. You start hearing his voice. You start allowing him to talk to you because you start growing in that intimacy and he will start teaching you. He will start guiding you. He will start instructing you. When you imagine, you know, there's this amazing video. I'm not sure if you've seen it. Check it out. Uh, it's talking about, uh, it's a song called Emmanuel um, by David Phelps. And this video goes on like this when, when they're just walking okay where are the people are when they wherever they walk jesus going with them you know that that that's the way you need to look at yourself wherever you go jesus is going with you jesus oh wow jesus you're with me i'm not alone you're with me you start imagining and start allowing this to uh work in your life i'm telling you your intimacy with him will grow because you start seeing him you start wow god you're amazing you're right with me you know many times i've seen this in my life as well you know, when the Lord just says, you know what, I'm there. And, and, and it's so amazing. This is some tool that God has helped us even to, you know, start giving out the word of God to people. Even now to, you know, understanding what God has in store and start releasing it over not only ourselves, but over other people as well. So that's why I'm challenging you today. You know, start imagining Jesus with you and let him become so real to you that you start having direct conversations with Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, your life will take it to an all new turn. Because, you know, if Adam distorted the word, Jesus is the word himself. You, if through Adam there was a fall, through Jesus, you will be able to rise back. No matter how many times you fail, you will be able to walk when you start hearing the voice of God and start walking, hearing, allowing the voice to lead you. That's what the key is. You know, I've shared this many times how the Lord just shows, you know, this is the, what this person is going through. Even a couple of uh, days ago, I was talking to this friend of mine. I don't know what she was actually going through. But the Lord just showed me something this a sign of like an imagination and then i said okay god is this what you want me to tell her i'm just going to take the step of faith and i'm going to tell her. when i took the step of faith and i told this is what i felt like this is what you're going through and she was shocked and she said yes this is exactly what i'm going through i want you to understand when you allow this to become a reality of your life wherever you go whatever you do you'll always walk with knowing yes my jesus is with me and you start talking to him because he you know he's there it's not just an, you know like a feeling but you just know without the shadow of a doubt he's right there you start talking to him it becomes more real and you start developing your relationship with god here's the thing i also told you last time you could get that message as well where you hear how to tune to hear him okay but i want you to look into another light here all right now you're hearing the voice of god and you may ask john what if i make a mistake now i'm just saying with very good sense that you know when you're learning to ride a bicycle okay you wouldn't just go like okay i'm taking the bicycle and start riding right away because you need to have one thing let's practice if i okay decide okay from tomorrow i'm going to become a well-renowned musician and i say okay tomorrow i take a big best uh, player and a musical instrument and i start playing it's not going to work out in a day i'm telling you you know in a practical sense you know this is something that you need to develop you need to learn to practice you know, hearing the voice of God is something you need to practice because you have been clouded in the state of sin. You need to learn to tune and practice how to hear His voice at all times. And you may fail sometimes, but don't lose hope. Don't give up. Say, Jesus, help me. Help me. 
and he will tune you and help you and trim off the rough edges and exactly at the right time he will hear his voice exactly and you will start growing in that intimacy so the first step in here continuing to grow in that intimacy is first step is to grow in intimacy through the power of imagination but as you move forward you allow god to start teaching you allow him to lead you allow him to guide you and you allow yourself don't condemn yourself don't feel bad oh no i made a mistake no you say you know what this is a new day i'm going to rise again i might have fallen but then you know what lord help me help me not to be clouded by sin i want to walk forward i want you to teach me i want you to guide me when you take that step by step process you will see that you will get better better at hearing his voice see it, this is so true because so many times i've seen people so many times god just says you know go and give this word for them it's not easy at all times to just go back and then give the word but when i allow god to say you know what it doesn't make sense but i'm going to take the step of faith and do it anyway and then you know what allow him to do it and allow him to say what he wants me to say and i like do that that's exactly what they require this is how the word of prophecy the word of exhortation this is how the word can actually help people live the life of victory that they were meant to live now here's the thing i want you to understand about hearing his voice you may say john i've sinned i've failed i think that's the reason i don't hear god you need to understand something here sin has got nothing to do with that why because when cain sinned the first thing he heard was the voice of god when adam and eve sinned god didn't say god knew already knew they had sinned but he didn't say okay they sinned so i'm not going to talk to them but the bible says so clearly that in the cool of the heat god went to meet them that's the thing i want you to understand that god is a god who will talk to you in respect of what you've been through he wants to give you chance after chance he wants to give you opportunity after opportunity he wants to help you rise up again and go out to fulfill what god has in store for you today i want you to understand don't let your mistakes don't let your sins don't let your failures think make you think that god won't talk to you or god would have written you off but i want to tell you today is a day you can get the right set that a set it back right again and say god i am giving myself back to you i don't want to be distorted i don't want to go back to my failures i want you to lead me i want you to guide me i want you to instruct me i want to walk with the flow of hearing his voice i want to take the step and say god i want to you know get better at hearing your voice and start going with that flow of allowing God to teach you and lead you and guide you step by step process and I'm telling you your life can take it to an all new turn if there's one thing I want to tell you about this year is this let this year start off by you hearing his voice it's one thing to pray and tell God you know what God bless me keep me and you know give him a couple of supplications or your list of prayers but it's very important if you really want to see god crown your efforts with success you allow him to speak to you allow him to lead you because his voice his word is what will help you to really live the life of victory only if you allow him to guide you in everything you do you will see that god is going to see do things in your life that you could not even imagine i want you to just take a couple of minutes and just Uh, think about whatever you just heard and say Jesus I want you to make this real to me help me to hear your voice so many times i just gone by the flow you know just read the bible like anything else just like a a daily duty in the morning or when i went to church or whatever Jesus help me to actually hear your voice at all times help me to become better at hearing you help me to grow in that intimacy with you in such a way that wherever i go whatever i do help me jesus that today i will rise back and start hearing your voice and no matter how many distortions were there in the past no many dis- uh, disappointments were there in the past but help me to walk with newness today that you will lead me you will guide me you will instruct me you will start taking me towards where you are supposed to be lord i commit all those who are listening today in your name jesus lord i pray that you will fill them with your presence fill them with your anointing and i most importantly want you to fill them with your word that they will not go into distortion they will not go into failures and the past mistakes again but help them to through the power of imagination 
get closer to you and realize that you are right with them, that you are walking with them, talking to them, and help them to develop that intimacy with you in such and such a way that they will hear you and they will grow practicing hearing you better every day. Lord, I pray that you will completely enable them to see that their life goes from better to better to better, giving you all glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. Hey, let me ask you a simple question today. If you came face to face with death now, do you know where you're going? You may say, John, you know what? I've been to church. I've been to a lot of seminaries, I've been through a lot of conferences, I know what you're talking about. But let me tell you something, sometimes you could be so engrossed in knowing this, but in knowing in your mind, but you're not known in your heart. Do you really know Jesus as your personal Savior? Do you really know where you're going? If you came face to face with that now, I'm saying this very respectfully, life is uncertain. Do you know where you would spend your eternity? Heaven and hell are real and there is a possibility that you could go to either of them. But my question is, do you know where you're really going? And the truth is, this is not a message of condemnation. This is a message of hope. That Jesus Christ came and demonstrated His love upon the cross, took away all your sins, that you may just believe in what He has done. You will be able to have the gift of eternal life. Can you make that simple prayer after me and say, Jesus, come into my life. I give my life into you. I want you to wash me and make me old again. I want you to be the driver of my life, not me, but you. I want you to lead me, guide me, teach me. I want to develop in the relationship with you. And when you allow Jesus to be the driver of your life, I want to declare that God is going to do things in your life that you could not even imagine. Go to good Bible-based church, start spending time with Him, and have a relationship with Him, I'm telling you, your life will not be the same again. God bless you.